Balkans is a vast region that harbors its own unique world within, and if you've never been to the Balkans and want to explore any country in that region, your first stop should definitely be Albania. Albanians are not confined to Albania alone, they are a widespread nation spread across almost every country in the Balkans. Whether you go to Kosovo, where you'll encounter a population that's 95% Albanian, or to North Macedonia, where nearly half of the population is of Albanian origin, you'll find traces of this nation, which has its own country covering 28,000 square kilometers and hosting a population of 3 million. In a way, the Balkans actually bear the traces of the Albanian nation, which has spread across various countries. In fact, the origins of this nation are not traced back to Italians or Ottoman Turks. Albanians are primarily the descendants of the Illyrians, who settled in this region around 2000 BC. The Illyrians inhabited this region for more than 1500 years until the Roman Empire arrived in these lands, laying the foundation for the ethnic origins of today's Albanian nation. However, their flag's origins do not date back to the Illyrians. Their flag has a history of 600 years, dating back to the time of the Ottoman Empire. After being raised in the Ottoman palace, today's national leader of Albania, Skanderbeg, rebelled against the Ottomans in 1443 with many Albanians and adopted the double-headed eagle of the Eastern Roman Empire as the flag of rebellion. By 1912, Albanian nationalists inspired by their ancestor Skanderbeg once again used this flag to gain permanent independence from the Ottoman Empire and after independence the flag gained official recognition. Today, Albania has a population of 82.7% ethnically Albanian, with the remaining portion including Greeks, Romanians, Roma people, Montenegrins and various minorities. Although nationalist Albanians that claim a much higher percentage, international sources confirm what we are saying. In this video, we filmed some scenes of this nation in their own country and will try to understand their way of life through these scenes. In Albania, especially during this time of the year, the weather is variable and you can experience rain and sunshine on the same day. People can still wear long-sleeved clothes or jackets during this time of the year. By the way, let's remind you that this country has no natural gas or central heating systems. In fact, even hotels have air conditioning and they provide electric water heaters in the bathrooms. Therefore, people in Balkan countries usually have air conditioning in their homes. In this region, you'll only encounter freezing weather for two or three months of the year. The rest of the months have relatively mild temperatures. The capital, Tirana, however, regardless of the weather, is always bustling with crowds throughout the day. Whether day or night, you'll constantly see the hustle and bustle of people and heavy traffic flow in the capital. The adult population heads to work in the morning while the youth head to school. People generally use bicycles or electric scooters for transportation in the country. There is no metro or tram system in the country. Despite the city being crowded, its surface area allows you to walk to many places, so ordinary people in the capital prefer public transportation as their primary mode. In the country, there are two different types of taxis. Some taxis are green and white, the others include the normal yellow taxis. The green and white ones constitute a much more luxurious and modern class of vehicles. Many of these vehicles belong to electric car brands from China. Their fares may be a bit higher, but you can easily feel they are much more luxurious and comfortable than the yellow taxis. We didn't ride the yellow taxis, but the white taxis, which take you from the capital to the airport for 17 euros, are probably more expensive than the yellow ones. All these taxis may be managed by a specific company, while the yellow taxis may consist of individuals working as taxi drivers. In addition to taxis, if you stroll along the main streets of the capital Tirana for a few days, another situation catches your attention. One out of every three cars in the city belongs to extremely luxurious models. There are many Range Rovers and new model luxury German cars in the city. While Balkan countries are generally known for modest monthly incomes, the cars in this city look much more luxurious compared to neighboring countries like North Macedonia and Kosovo. If you put someone who has never been to Albania on a busy street, they might say, is this Germany? When I asked our local female guide what this meant, she said that Albanian men prioritize buying cars over owning a house, and some even rent these cars to impress their girlfriends. 
So Albanian men seem to appreciate showing off. Okay, you'll see a lot of Range Rovers. Yes, it's true. Ah, that's actually a bus in there, Tirana Re. It's one of the main buses that hangs around Tirana. Uh, Range Rovers and expensive cars. How do these guys afford that? Well, um, let's remember that there's a lot of people that actually come in here just to rent a nice car because for an average Albanian guy, owning a nice car is better than having a house. So they would die for having an expensive car. This gives them a sense of power, but that's also a very silly way to pick up girls, <laughs> mostly. This is why you're going to see, especially in Bloku, in those areas, you'll see like people uh, driving expensive, very expensive car, luxury cars. They never stop. They just do circles around the area and they just like take a look at girls. It's very silly, but it cannot be perfect. We're going to have like the bad sides as well. As for pedestrians, there are plenty of sidewalks. Wherever there is a pedestrian walkway, cars stop directly showing respect. If you look at the city from above, you can generally see that it has a well-organized road network. The roads are mostly dual carriageways and they have built bicycle lanes in the middle of the roads. Considering that there are quite a number of cyclists and scooter users in the country, we can say that these bicycle lanes in the middle of the roads serve their purpose quite well. When you examine the buildings around the capital, you'll generally find that the ones around Skanderbeg Square are newer, while those in the side streets may start to show signs of aging, with some even lacking paint. When it comes to these buildings, it's not so much about being new or old, but rather the architecture and height of the buildings catch the eye. In Tirana, new buildings are constructed to be extremely tall. The reason for this could be the scarcity of vacant land in the capital. However, at this point, there's another thing to note. Besides being tall, the buildings under construction don't seem very attractive from an architectural standpoint. This may vary from person to person, but in my opinion, there are too many sharp protrusions and recesses in the new buildings, which detract from the aesthetic appeal. In the narrow streets, these brick buildings appear as pale and worn out as possible. Most likely, the residents of these apartment buildings constitute the lowest income class in the capital. It is said that the minimum monthly income in the country is around 400 euros, and I guess those living in these apartments probably include individuals earning the minimum wage. In Albania, the prices of apartment units are determined based on the square meter. For example, the amount set for one square meter varies between 800 and 1,000 euros. So, if you want to buy a three-bedroom house consisting of 100 square meters, you need to have a budget of around 100,000 euros for an apartment in that area. The lowest apartment rents in the capital start from 300 euros and increase according to your budget. When I asked our guide how families with low incomes manage to survive in the capital, she jokingly said, We have magical powers. However, if we were to make a logical inference, we know that Albanians are not just a nation of three million. We also know that at least as many people work in richer countries in Europe. Since Albanians are loyal to their homeland, students and adults who have established themselves abroad regularly send cash flow to their countries and thus support their families, which helps them survive. It's quite difficult for ordinary people with average incomes to buy a house in the capital. In fact, the average age of marriage in the country is around 27, 28 years old. Since Albanians love lavish weddings with many guests, a significant budget must be allocated for wedding expenses. If you are considering living in Albania, marrying an Albanian could be one of the best moves to obtain residency there. This way, you open the doors of a second country for yourself apart from your own. Besides, they have very good genetics and are extremely warm, positive and talkative, making them appealing to others. On the other hand, some buildings in the country have beautiful artistic works on their side facades, befitting the capital. For example, while some buildings' side facades depict a colourful library, others feature delicate human portraits. The worn-out appearance of most apartment units indicates that they are at least 15, 20 years old. Additionally, the height of the buildings also indicates that there are not many earthquakes in this country. Roughly speaking, only one earthquake with a magnitude of 4 and above occurs annually in this country, 
This is one of the factors that makes the country geologically safe. Therefore, people do not hesitate to live in old buildings. Returning to our main topic, Albania looks quite pleasant, my friends. One concrete example of this is the locals showing a remarkably calm demeanor and being able to roam around freely. Additionally, there are a lot of police officers patrolling around. These officers are ordinary ranked policemen and usually patrol the busy squares of the city in pairs. During my observations over the past week, I haven't seen them intervene in any incidents. They just occasionally approach beggar gypsies and have conversations with them. The police officers also have a direct impact on the city's traffic. Since there is heavy traffic flow in the country, traffic lights can sometimes be inadequate at some intersections, and in such cases, traffic police officers decide which vehicle should pass or stop. As a result, Albania is one of the countries in the Balkans that deploys the most police patrols. If you've been to the capital of the country, one of the most well-known and largest squares is Skanda Beg Square. In my opinion, the square has a truly beautiful and modern texture. However, considering that even in these months many tourists come to the country, the square seems a bit lifeless. So, in my opinion, they are not fully utilizing the potential of the square. They should organize lively events both during the day and in the evenings in the square. Because that's where almost all visitors to the capital first arrive, and they should be able to market something of their own in that square. They should show both fun and cultural aspects related to Albania to visitors in that square. For example, there could be street dancers or street food stalls representing the country. Maybe it's not like this in the summer months, but these days it has a rather calm atmosphere. Therefore, there is not much tourists can do in Skanderbeg Square other than taking photos. In terms of entertainment, there is only a Ferris wheel. The square is very spacious, but in my opinion, it is dysfunctional. Due to the lack of activities, tourists end up with money in their pockets. If you look at the faces of the people in the square, you can really anticipate that there are plenty of young people in the country. These people mostly include Generation Z youths under the age of 25. You can see that they are extremely well-groomed, beautiful and handsome. Albanians are indeed clean people who care about their appearance. Especially the younger generation really values their hair, beard and makeup. People mostly have black hair and many have fair skin. There are not many blonde and green or blue-eyed people among Albanians. If you see blonde, blue-eyed people on the streets, they are not Albanians but Scandinavian tourists, just so you know. Still, I can say that they are genetically beautiful and handsome. As for the character, Albania is a society that loves to host its guests warmly. If you want to ask something from people on the street, they respond sincerely, and if you want to buy something from shopkeepers, they greet you with a smile. Moreover, if local people know a few words in your language when you shop from them, they don't forget to thank you in your language as well. This makes you feel more intimate and affectionate towards Albanians. Ultimately, perhaps due to the climate, like in all Balkan countries, Albanians are people who enjoy living life and conversing with others, my friends. As for the elderly, they generally spend their time resting on the colourful benches on the edge of the square or in nearby parks. Regarding Albanian youth, the guide mentions that many of them go to Germany after university. A similar example was also mentioned by guides in Kosovo and North Macedonia. Young people in the Balkans tend to focus their career plans more on foreign countries. Those who study and gain skills can earn their living much more easily in industrialized countries like Germany than working for less than 1,000 euros a month in their own countries and can achieve higher purchasing power. As a result, young people can dream of buying a nice apartment in their country by bringing back the money they earned abroad. Speaking of the education of young people in the country, it should be noted that I didn't see a campus environment at universities in the capital, Tirana. In other words, I didn't come across campuses with large green areas and faculties. We went to an area marked on the map as a university area and saw faculty buildings spread across different areas of the city. In other words, the buildings where students receive education are directly connected to the civilian population in the city and are located along the main street. 
For example, someone studying economics at the same university enters another building on the street, while someone studying engineering heads to another part of the city where the university building is located. Apart from these, Albania does not have globally renowned brands. Most electronic devices, cars and products related to the defense industry are imported from abroad. The country is rich in natural fruits and vegetables, but selling these products does not bring in as much money as technological products. Therefore, not many sectors in which the country directly earns significant income through sales. Besides the food and beverage sector, they produce textiles and construction materials. The country's potential largest trading partners are Italy, Turkey, Greece, Germany and China. Mainly, many electric vehicles on the roads are imported from China. Nevertheless, they have a great advantage. Unlike some Balkan countries, this country has a sea. Having a sea means tourists means money. If a country has a sea, there are many extra sectors. This directly affects the number of tourists entering the country. The country has essential beach cities like Saranda and Duras. American and European tourists find it quite attractive to come to Albania in the summer as they find the Balkans cheaper. Countries like Albania and Greece are among the countries that attract the most tourists from Northern Europe in the summer months. This directly contributes significantly to the country's economy. Unsurprisingly, the country is not very productive when considering the tumultuous history Albania has experienced over the past 100 years. After being under Ottoman rule for over 400 years, Albania gained independence in 1912. However, Italians and Germans attempted to occupy the country during World War II. Shortly after the war, they had to deal with communism, living under the rule of a single man until the 1990s. Many people in Albania today cite examples from the years of communism as reasons for the country's lack of development. While the government is now a NATO member, they have not been able to join the European Union. If they were to become members of the EU, the country's economy could significantly improve. For example, they have a currency called lek, which is not very valuable. The value of one euro is roughly 100 Albanian lek. Since the euro equivalent of the currency is relatively low, Albanians have printed banknotes in denominations of 500, 1000 and even 2000 units. Even standard food items like cheese and olives are priced beyond 200 lek and restaurant meals are not considered cheap. This indicates that the country experiences significant inflation. The purchasing power is not strong and even food products are expensive. For instance, if three friends go to a standard Italian restaurant, the meals without wine cost around 50 euros. Isn't that expensive? Of course, it is important not to deny that the food is delicious. For example, there's a dish called Karniarek. A very similar dish exists in Turkey and Greece with the same name. I say very similar because Turks stuff eggplants with minced meat, onions and tomatoes, while Albanians' version resembles that of Greeks more. It's made from spinach and topped with yogurt. Of course, one should not forget about Albanian liver. Albanian liver in sauce has gained worldwide fame and is consumed often as an appetizer alongside drinks like raki. Essentially, Albanian cuisine bears many resemblances to Greek and Turkish cuisines. The majority of what they eat and drink tastes the same, and sometimes even the names are identical. The reason behind this is probably the fact that they were governed under the Ottoman Empire for a period. One reason you see many elderly people in the country is because people there genuinely eat natural and fresh foods. Since Albania has fertile lands and a beautiful coastline, people can grow everything in its most natural and freshest form on these lands. With a population of only 3 million, the food produced within the country's borders meets people's needs abundantly, allowing them to eat organically and fresh. If you are more of a meat-eater, you can also go to restaurants opened by Arabs or Turks. For example, if two people go to this restaurant, these two portions of food, along with non-alcoholic beverages, cost 45 euros. Although the food is delicious, from an outsider's perspective, everyone says that the Balkan countries are cheap, but this is entirely a subjective concept. If you come from the United States or countries like Switzerland, Denmark or the United Arab Emirates, of course, this place will seem extremely cheap to you. 
However, as someone with a monthly income of 1,500, 2,000 euros, dining out can seem extremely expensive to you when visiting the country. Some sources indicate that the annual inflation rate in the country is around 5%, which is quite acceptable. But I believe the prices in restaurants being close to those in other European Union countries are not sufficient. Prices in supermarkets generally look like this. For example, if you consider that 1,000 a lek equals 10 euros, you can compare meat prices with those in your own country. Market products seem much more affordable compared to restaurants. Most likely, the majority of the Albanian population prefers to eat much larger portions at home for less money rather than spending more on meat in restaurants. In terms of religion, the number of Muslims in the country is quite significant. In fact, some sources indicate that more than half of the population is Muslim. At this point, distinctions in dining options arise on some streets in the capital. For instance, in restaurants in areas with many Muslims and mosques, you will see halal written on signs. These shops labeled as halal do not offer pork products. However, it should be noted that Albania is not a country where religious values are dominant. During the communist era, religious beliefs were even banned in the country. The dictator Enver Hoxha reduced the concept of belief to the lowest levels and the country became one of the atheist countries in the Balkans. Considering that this leader ruled the country until 1985, we cannot expect them to have become overly religious in the past 40 years. That is why, even though there are many mosques in the country, Muslims do not practice this religion as dominantly as in Middle Eastern countries. In fact, some Albanians say that while Muslims pray in mosques, they also consume pork. Moreover, in fast food establishments in the country, you will generally find three types of meat lined up side by side chicken, beef, and pork. And such fast food shops are pretty abundant in Albania, where many people can consume the meat of any kind of animal. Coffee and food are almost sacred in the country. Albanians love eating and drinking coffee. However, if you like to drink coffee hot, you may spoil your taste here. Because they drink milky coffees like cappuccino lukewarm, my friends. After preparing the espresso hot, the baristas likely add cold milk on top without heating it because the coffees are really lukewarm and you don't enjoy a hot espresso. We observe this not only in one cafe, but in multiple places. Cafes are one of the places where people spend the most time in this country. They have not introduced globally renowned brands like Starbucks into their country. Instead, they have created local brands and opened many places with similar concepts. For example, there is a place called Castle in the heart of the capital. Perhaps it is called Castle, because it looks like a castle gate at the entrance. As soon as you enter, you will see various places facing each other for about 200-300 meters. These places look more elite and luxurious compared to cafes and restaurants in different parts of the city. After all, the clientele generally consists of financially well-off people. Even if you don't sit in one of the places there, there are plenty of objects to take photos of and street musicians around. Most of these musicians are individuals from the Roma, or in other words, the gypsy community in the country. Albanians tend to listen to a lot of Turkish music and Roma music. Therefore, you can see many Roma musicians on the streets while you're there. In another corner of the city, there is an artificial concrete structure called the Pyramid one of Albania's fundamental decorations. If you bother to climb the stairs to the top, you can overlook many buildings in the capital from above. However, since there are many tall buildings in the country, climbing the pyramids does not promise a panoramic city view in terms of scenery. This is because there is no architectural coherence in the city. Tall office buildings in skyscraper style are interspersed between low-rise buildings and apartments. This has lowered the visual pleasure of the capital. Almost everyone who climbs the pyramid there does not neglect to take photos. Especially women do this a lot. In this video, we try to narrate life in the capital of Albania based on observation. You can like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.